at least take a fucking minute and look at the Pinterest board. Like, yeah, at that point, you're just being willfully ignorant about what I want for the sake of your own selfish needs. Right. Love that. Yes. Yes. Welcome back. We're here. We're really doing nothing it. to say. I just moved, fresh off a move. I feel so happy about it. I that. feel like I'm somehow not brain dead. I thought I was going to be today. I don't. Especially know. when I looked in the mirror this morning, I was like, "That is a, the face of someone who's got nothing going on upstairs." Like I just, you know, you just look beat up. I've just been like, I feel like I've been manual laboring all weekend. <laughs> Moving is really hard. I couldn't do it. I mean, you've done it. You've moved three times in two years, including the Airbnb. <sighs> I couldn't do it. You're stronger it's than I am. Chilled on my spine. I honestly, I thought about moving and I was like, I will just stay in this house with a leaky roof and a leaky studio if I don't want to move. No, I'm bury me in this house. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, do you want to renew your lease? I'm like, I'm actually going to buy it. I can't leave. But you moved into your new house on Friday and we hung out solo. We Just did. You, and it was really fun. That's, it's been on your agenda. Well, it's not on yours. It's, yeah. <laughs> You've just you've been pushing for it. We haven't hung out solo in a long time. <laughs> it's important to me. Okay, let's thank a couple of our partners, and then we will jump into it. Thanks to Hungry Root for supporting Girls Got to Eat. Right now, Hungry Root is offering our Girls Got to Eat audience forty percent off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to hungryroot.com/gge. And thanks to Base for supporting Girls Got to Eat. Now we don't need to choose between beautiful pieces and functional luggage. Base luggage makes travel a breeze. Get fifteen percent off your first purchase at Base travel.com slash gg yes and thanks to article for supporting girls got to eat their curated assortment of mid-century modern coastal industrial scandy and boho designs makes furniture shopping simple articles offering you 50 dollars off your first purchase of 100 dollars or more go to article.com slash gge and this episode is sponsored by quince indulge in affordable luxury go to quince.com slash gge for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns that's quince.com slash gge and it's Cindy Hesseltine's birthday week. What is? Shout out to all our Aries queens yes. and kings. Yes. We have a March birthday with our guest today, but I don't think she's in Aries. I don't remember what the dates of Aries are. Well, she are. said early March. Aries know. is later in March, early April. But anyway, my mom's birthday is March 27th, so shout out to her. I have not been to her birthday party in so long. <laughs> The last time I went to her birthday party, Matt and Steph said that they were pregnant. Yes. So a couple years ago, we went to your brother's for your mom's birthday. We lived in New York. I used to drive down all the time together. And um, a very special moment was that day. (laughs) So it's my mom's 70th. Yeah. Uh, We may have talked about this, but if you're new around here, welcome. I planned this whole birthday for my mom, you know, in the backbone of the family. And I planned mass (laughs) rehearsal dinner, planned my mom's. So I planned this, like, wonderful dinner with all her friends and everybody at Salt Air in Rehoboth. And we met at Matt's beforehand. And they gave my mom, like, her birthday card. And in it was the sonogram photo. And she's in the kitchen. And she just starts tearing up. And my immediate reaction, because kids are not on my mind, even though I knew they were trying. I've watched a lot of baby (laughs) reveals with Ashley. Her mind never goes to baby. It doesn't go there. Never. Even if I know you've been trying, <laughs> I know you've been fucking, I know you've been trying. It, I still, I can't, it does. it's so far off my radar at all times. But the way that you sound, so I have a disconnect by what I see happening on your face and what's coming out of your mouth, because you sound like you're saying, oh my God, you guys got pregnant. But what's coming out of your mouth is usually like, are you guys moving to a new place? Right. So my mom starts like tearing up and she's like, oh my God. And in my head, I go, if they got her a better gift than me planning this birthday, I plan this, I paid for this, you know, and I go, did you get her a Peloton? Literally, my reaction Say. was, wait, did you get her a Peloton? I'm like, that's not, that's the first thing. If they outdid me on the gift. And then I was like, it hit me. And I went over and I started crying. And it's so funny, Raina, Matt sent me that video just a couple weeks ago. And he goes, who else was here? And I said, just Raina. I yeah. think maybe Lindsay and Buck came later. I can't remember. Yeah, they did. And he goes, whose laugh is that? <laughs> and it's you. And I was like, Matt, that's your sister. You don't know her laugh. <laughs> it was like, your laugh was in the background. He was like, whose laugh was that? And I was like, it's Raina's cute little that's laugh. So Raina, Raina's famous laugh. I love your brother. I will never forget. <laughs> did you get her a Peloton? <laughs> no, we got her a, a grandchild. We your did. mom was crying. They did. <laughs> 
you know, it's so funny because, like, you know that, like, they announced their – the first grandchild of the family. And my mom probably still came away that night like, Ashley is just still <laughs> the best child I could ever <laughs> Remember she was all lit up and you were trying to help her with her balloon photo? Yes. Oh, your family's so cute. I can't relate. I can't relate to being the favorite. You really are. Well, I was telling you, so you came over Friday and moved in and then Sparkle Eyes, my boyfriend again, if you're new here, that's his name. He FaceTimed and I had already told you how much his family wants to meet you. When I went and spent time with them, his mom was like, so do you think Raina will come over I'm so next flattered. Time? And she just loves your laugh. I think she watches clips on Instagram. I don't think she's fully listening. I don't think that she should. But she was like, when we do the show in Boston, you think Raina would come over? And then you and I are talking to him on FaceTime, and he was like, brings it up again. I'm like, this family is dying to meet you. It's touching to be incorporated in your life that way, that like <laughs> I'm family and that like the people in your life want to include me in things. It's really nice. I was just like, okay, guys, we get it. Like. <laughs> His mom brought up like three times, like, and then he kept talking about how good you looked. I'm like, okay, everybody relax. You were, I was like, Ashley, he's just being polite. Also, so if you guys didn't listen last week, I got surgery and I got liposuction along my jaw and my neck. And what can happen is very common is that it basically like, I don't want to say it severs the nerve endings, but it compromises the nerve endings. So I have like paralysis on one side of my face. It's so, like, so cute. I hope you have it forever. <laughs> I love the crooked mouth. I swear, like, I feel like guys are going to be into it. They are, Ashley. I have never gotten See? hit on more than when I had a Band-Aid on my chin. <laughs> what, I, they think it's a dick-sucking injury? Probably. They're just like, she's so helpless. I <laughs> went to – so when I first got the surgery done, he told me ahead of time, this is very common. Some people lose the ability to smile for like six weeks. And I was like, oh, that can't happen. And within like a couple of days of the surgery, I was like, oh, my, this is amazing. I can still smile. Everything's amazing. Like I didn't lose that. But now part of my fa- – like I noticed it a couple of days ago because so I went to bite into a sandwich and part of my lip would not move out of the way. Like I could – I had to, I had to move my own move lip, lip on the right-hand side because it will not – I'm like, why are you keep biting my lip and I watched myself do it and I was like oh I don't have like movement on that side of my face there are guys out there that are like that sounds so hot it's like uh, poor things <laughs> I know it's giving poor things I know your she's helplessness so helpless. is sexy yes it's like she's never gonna emasculate me she's not gonna make more money than me or be more successful that's what my face is giving right now <laughs> well I... guys love my lisp too it sounds a little helpless well there's something that's it's a little like gross and concerning that guys like stuff that's childlike like let's be real but like Girl, yes we, i think i mentioned this in the podcast before when kate had adult braces <laughs> when we were she was maybe 24 or maybe i was like 26 whatever and we were living in atlanta next door to each other and just you know partying drinking dating all the time and she had to get adult braces for like six months she never got hit on more and i'm like you guys are fucking gross it's because she looks like a middle schooler that's why, that's why they all like my lisp too it's because it's childlike <laughs> it's uh, gross i know <laughs> but the crooked mouth is cute. I actually am so flattered you think that's so cute. And you kept talking about it on Friday. And I was like, oh, I like truly cannot move part of my face. It well, will go away. Yes. Well, maybe not. Maybe it will maybe go away. It's, you're, it's so funny, Raina, because you're going to like meet some guy and he's going to say that's his favorite thing about you. I know. And then you're going to have to go back to Dr. Barrett and be like, M- make sure that I never lose this. I thought about this and I've thought about like going on dates and like <laughs> I am not my authentic self because my lisp is way harder than normal and I have paralysis on the side of my face. And so I thought about like going on dates with people and if they like it, I have to be like, I have to Botox the other side of my face. So you a... always have this. Yeah. It's so funny. Well, yeah, you just look great. The like oh, CO2 you. laser, your skin looks great, the hair, the whole thing but my boyfriend said it to you on the FaceTime and then the next day he reiterated I was like all right we get it first time is fine no. second time when I'm not around I don't care I actually loved it's it a little far <laughs> I know. I my dad when we were like kids <laughs> he got Bell's palsy yeah I look like I have Bell's palsy on one side of my face but like <laughs> we were just at dinner and my mom was like Lee <laughs> But it's like, you're just like, like, you look like that emoji with the like crooked, you're just like this. And it was hard not to laugh. (laughs) It's funny. You just, I've been watching myself talk and I'm like, she has no control on the right side of her face. (laughs) This is really, the CO2 laser has been great. I will never put my my face in the sun again. I've worn makeup in three weeks. I feel great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you to you and Sparkle Eyes and his family and everybody (laughs) who says I look great. Okay. Well, that is kind of like a teaser. We are going to announce the tour next (laughs) week yes on the first we're going to announce it It will not be an april fool's joke it's the real tour you guys know we're coming to boston but that's all you know right now yes i'm sure you can guess we have some new cities we've never been to well at least one two i miss miss touring i know i miss it so deeply in my soul i feel like i'm just like a regular person now i'm just like every weekend people are like what are you up to and i'm like nothing i'm just here that's why i moved just to have something to be excited about (laughs) 
to have a big life event. I was like, oh, we're not touring. I may as well move. Yeah, you got to do something to like get the hit. I just, I'm so <laughs> bored. I just, I miss being on tour. I miss being with everybody. I know you do too. So next week, all the cities ah! through 2024. And then we have some really fun stuff for 25 planned as well. So that'll be next week. And then we have another big announcement re-release next week. So if you guys are new here, we have a premium sex toy company, Vibes Only, Bluetooth connected toys, and our number one best-selling toy sold out in a day, the Richard Cochran will be back. Yes, it's coming back. So listen next week for all the deets. And I cannot wait for more of you to get this in your hands and around these dicks because you deserve it. And I hate that they sold out so quickly. And there's people that have been jonesing for the Richard. So you can get this dick very soon. Also, if you sign up for the newsletter, those people will have access to it first. We have a wait list. Yeah. So if you sign up for that, you'll get an email before all these other people. Our newsletter is great. It's, I just said to you the other day, in the middle of a meeting, I was like, Ash, this is gorgeous. We, I mean, I have a hand in it, but, like, this is someone's job on our team to do this. And, like, we've had such a wonderful experience. Like, this is not me and Raina just, like, throwing this together every week. Like, but we come up with the topics, and there was a really good lube one. I loved it. La- you loved the lube one last week, which is, like, tips to introduce lube into the bedroom if your partner is hesitant. And we just put out a great newsletter, and you do get updated first when we are dropping things, re-releasing things. Yeah, and we have a couple thousand people on that wait list for the Richard, so mm-hmm. – Sign up. Yeah. Sells out again. Okay. So I'll talk about the move really quick. Yeah. Um, I did move from West Hollywood to Santa Monica. And the house that I lived in was like the most gorgeous home I've ever seen. Like every detail, all of the furnishings and the lighting, the countertops, everything. The bathroom was the most beautiful bathroom I've ever seen in my life. Like five-star hotels included. Better than hotels. It's, it's unreal. unbelievable. I said, Ashley, anywhere you go is going to be the most yeah. precipitous drop. But I moved into a house that I love more just because it's over on the west side where I want to be. And it's bigger and I have more outdoor space but it's like it's just a little older it's a different vibe Mm -hmm. which I feel like is really a metaphor for the whole move from West Hollywood to Santa Monica in the first place I was thinking about this last night like I went to my old house to do some things and I was like driving through the Beverly Hills flats and I live very close to them that was where I would walk Azul in the mornings and stuff and it's arguably the most beautiful neighborhood in LA the flats of Beverly Hills are next level like they're just so pristine so gorgeous the homes the trees the streets everything is spotless and beautiful and perfection and so is was my neighborhood so was my west hollywood neighborhood everything was just so beautiful and i'm like, over in west santa monica and it just feels like more down to earth more laid back like when we moved here i was like why would Raina not want to live in like the most beautiful neighborhood like close to beverly hills and like you lived over in venice i'm like it just doesn't feel like sophisticated but in reality it's like kind of pretentious like over obviously in beverly hills and you move over to the west side and it's like such a different vibe like even my coffee shop felt different in the morning and I just love the way it feels like coming from Beverly Hills essentially like West Hollywood cusp of Beverly Hills like I'd be walking around and people would be like valeting cars at a house party you know you'd have a valet set up every fancy car it's just like Maseratis and Lamborghinis and Ferraris and then Where I live now, people are having family reunions in the park across the street. You know, like, it is just different vibes, like, really down to earth. And I just like it. Like, it just is chill and different. I think there is such a stark difference between the neighborhoods. Yeah. I mean, listen, you also live there because you wanted to live close to your other best friend. Comedy clubs. Yeah. um, Comedy clubs. And also, your specific area is highly walkable. But, I mean, I love where I live so much. I'm a four-minute drive to the beach. I live right behind Abbot Kinney. And I walk around and I see people I know, like, almost every day. I never walk down literally Abbot Kinney and don't, like, run into people that I know. It feels more like community. It's such a community. Also, it's like, I don't need to be around these, like, Beverly Hills houses. I don't live there. I'm not friends with people that live there. It's true. It's not my community of people like I live in a beautiful neighborhood there's lots of palm trees there's a lot of greenery and nature all around my house like the jungle and I just I love it I know like I would walk around these Beverly Hills houses and when I first moved over there I'd be like I can't believe I get to live here this is so gorgeous and then it just you've seen it and it gets boring and I take his old this park across the street now and he's playing with dogs and I'm meeting people and they're young and they're just again like I keep just using the word down to earth it just is a totally different vibe in like the best way and my lifestyle just it feels different and in a good way I was just like really ready for the move I'm just I'm so happy to live near each other again oh like, my god this has been really like not like horrible and shitty but like you and I maybe see each we see each other on recording days we don't work together that often anymore like right. when we lived in New York I was an eight minute walk to your apartment and yeah. our studio and so like I went over there just I was there like sometimes like four days out of the five per week or two three did, times a day if yeah. we needed to be yeah and if we like needed to work on something for an hour I was like 
well, I'll just come do it with you, you know? And so, like, I haven't been able to do that with you for over a year. And it's just, like, such a hassle, like, getting to both places. And so to have you – I drove home from your place the other night. It took me eight minutes. And it was just, like, such a pleasure. No. I picked Raina up for the beach on Saturday. Picked her up. She brings me bagels the next morning. Yes, she picked me up today bagels. to come here. Like, I told my mom I was on the phone with my mom last night. And I was like, Raina's so close. She brought me bagels this morning. My mom goes, What? I was like, and I picked her up for the beach yesterday. She was like, oh, my God. She was, like, so excited. It's We're going to have a different friendship. I just – I feel like you got this boyfriend this year and you moved away from me. Like, are we even friends? No, I, 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 I lived, lived, just laughed. I, I love, lived I love away from you before I got the boyfriend. <laughs> we had chosen to be across town from each other before he um, came along. But it's a real but, yeah. change for us because we just have been so far away from each other. And, like, I like more spontaneous hangs. That This morning I, like, picked you up. It was just – it was good. Yeah. So I'll Welcome. moved in. Azul's really happy. I just couldn't be happier. So, yeah, I'm a West Side girl now. Finally. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks. Thanks. I'm Thanks. very excited. Thanks so much. Glad Tessa's to be here. over by us, too. Tessa had a day on Friday. <laughs> we fucking ran her ass. I was like, is she like these fucking bitches? <laughs> there was no, like, girls got to eat, vibes only work on Friday. It was <laughs> Ashley's moving. Raina has a refrigerator getting delivered. Azul has to go to Raina's. Raina's dog sitting. She was all over the place. Tessa, how close are you to the two of us? Like, what's oh, your yeah, drive like? How long like? take you to my house? I'm equidist, and I'm eight minutes from both of you. Eight uh, minutes to each of us. We are so lucky. I'm going to oh make you rent so many more packages. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that, Tessa. That's amazing. Yes. I keep trying to hook Tessa up with people. Like, she had to go meet the guy to install my Wi-Fi, and I was like, his name is Serge. Is he hot? And then today, I was like, what do you think about that moving guy? Like, I can't she and texted me when the movie like, guy was good looking. I was like, I'll be there. He was a vibe. He was cute. Yeah. I usually don't get good looking movers. Like I've never really had the moving fantasy, oh, which we knew guys, a guy I dated in New York and then even Dylan Palladino, like we knew hot movers. I just never had them. I had four huge Russian guys that were so sexy. But you know, I was thinking if your brother, your brother owns a moving company. Yeah. So let's plug it out. Matt is the managing partner for Black Tie Moving Delaware. So and he does state to state. So if you guys are going to Delaware or from Delaware or even in that area, I mean, I think mostly it's something needs to be in Delaware, but Black Tie and a Black Tie, wherever they're located. They are not out here, so I didn't use them, but, like, I'm not going to talk about my moving company because my brother is part of a moving company, and so can't hype it enough. But, yeah, anyway. If Matt showed up at my house, the amount of videos and photos I'd be taking. <laughs> this big dude <laughs> moved all my stuff. He's so nice. He's so competent. He's, he's so smart. I mean, he's just, like, such a manly, competent man. Like, when we looked at houses in Delaware for you to buy, mm. and he was just like, oh, he, I know this so material. Mm. I know this the construction type of stuff. Like, he's just... The way I would be hitting on Matt. He has a lot of knowledge. <laughs> he's not doing too many moves anymore because he's in charge. But right. he really, like, I don't know, he really helps those guys out. Like, he has some guys that work for him that just maybe have had a, a rougher go at it. You know, he really just helps these guys kind of a lot in life. And mm -hmm. I, he's such a good boss. And today I texted him. I was like, I finally got a mover that's, like, kind of good looking. And he was like, is he as good looking as my guy? And he sends me a picture of his guy, tatted neck oh, down, ooh. just, you know, sexy dude. And Matt's sending you thirst traps. <laughs> big giant Russian dude is a vibe. Oh, was sexy. My was mounting sexy. guy is this like big Russian dude, Igor, and he came and did some of my mounting, my mounting needs. But yeah, it's just funny when you move, you're just surrounded by all these just like handy dudes. You Listen, are. The sparkle eyes, if you're listening, I, you are handy too, but you're not here. Yeah. And why do I even have a boyfriend if you can't help me move boxes? Um, if you're not unpacking boxes or carrying my <laughs> luggage, I don't need you. <laughs> also for sex and companionship. I sent him like, a photo was, of all I, these boxes and was like, what? what is even the point of this? <laughs> you're such a shit. He'll be there for the housewarming. That's important. Oh, he will be. Yeah. Oh, yay. Okay. In terms of like having people help you with moving, so many sexy task grabbers, but my smartest, most competent one is the least attractive. <laughs> can't have it all and he is going to do a lot of stuff for the studio also and actually like so you guys have been watching us on spotify week to week and they've been so wonderful with us but hopefully not the episode on the first next week but the following one we will hopefully be in our brand new studio so we're oh almost gosh. there and tess has been such a huge help and i just can't wait to get it set up i can't wait let's take a quick break and then you had a question to ask me i'm going to tell you guys about quince we love quince so much rain and i were just on their site shopping ordering some new stuff for spring and you can upgrade your wardrobe with luxury essentials at unbeatable prices. Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. So we love Quince because they really do sell items like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters, washable silk tops, timeless 14 karat gold jewelry, and all their prices are 50 to 80% less than similar brands. But there is no catch here. They only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics and finishes. I was thinking about Quince the other day because I was listening to a Quince ad on Nick Vi 
Styles podcast. Okay. And I was just like, they are really doing it. Like, this isn't this fast fashion, of course. Like, right. They're just – I feel like they're not trying to mark stuff up too much. Like, I'm not in their meetings, but I don't know what their exact goals are. But they really just want to provide quality clothing at reasonable prices and – have safe ethical practices and i just admire that so so much if nothing else like that's a reason to shop quince but Absolutely. of course we love their clothing as well so i'm on their site now i've talked about the washable silk before you guys have to get these washable silk slip dresses for spring and summer there is like a longer one and a shorter one just wear them with sneakers you can dress them up with heels i'm obsessed and you don't get them dry cleaned the cashmere is great but we are getting into like warmer weather so get into this washable silk. There's just this like nice tensile utility shirt that's going to look really great. Their workout gear is incredible. I've been hearing so much. I don't have any yet. And I'm like, that's what I just ordered was some of their workout stuff. I'm really interested. They have men's, of course, baby and kids. They have travel. And you can just get on there and see what you want. Jewelry, of course, like we mentioned, nice jackets of all types of different weights for different climates. And you can trust what you're, what you're wearing. So again, we've said it before. If you feel like you want to just upgrade your wardrobe, look a little more like like quiet luxury, sophisticated, put together. This is the place to go. Trust me on this. They have so much to choose from. You guys are going to love it. And we have a deal for you. You can indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash GGE for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash GGE to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash GGE. Okay. So the team at Hunger Root just sent us a new box. It is full of yummy stuff. I just got a new refrigerator. So I got to like stock it with new fun things. <laughs> so basically you go to their website I took a short quiz and then they send me the box and I'll tell you what's in the box but it's full of just like delicious fun things and many Hungry Root customers save money on groceries versus the store right now Hungry Root is offering you 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life just go to HungryRoot.com slash GGE it really is like a partner in healthy living it's just an easy way to get fresh high quality groceries delivered to your door so you go to their website you take this quiz they get so granular with like what you want to eat and how you want to eat it. So if you like high protein and you want lean protein and like what type of kitchen appliances do you have at the house to cook mm-hmm. those things. They give you recommendations to put those groceries to good use. They're just like, you know, you have all these things in your fridge. This would be a good thing to make with it. And they'll recommend groceries based on personal taste. Orders are fully customizable and there are suggestions. You can take them or you can choose anything you want. But I really just love what they have to offer. Offer. I get a lot of snacks. I eat breakfast every morning. So they sent like grapes, berries. I have yogurt, hummus, oat milk. It's just like fresh and easy. And just like you can make like a bunch of different meals out of this that just are great. Yeah, I've made some incredible meals, but they really top to bottom, like your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your snacks, your yogurts, your fruit, your kombucha, if you're into that kind of thing, you know, whatever you want. I like absolutely love it and just have it delivered to your door. And again, like I'm so picky about fruits and vegetables. You go to the farmer's market every week, like, yeah. you know, you're getting like that quality of stuff. Absolutely. So it's great. You guys can save hours planning, shopping, cooking, and Hungry Root delivers food that you'll love. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Girls Getting Listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash GGE to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That is HungryRoot.com slash GGE. Don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you and everything is at GirlsGottaEat.com as well. Tessa manages all of the partners and all of the codes. Okay. I just have like a dating question for you because this came up. We might have talked about this years ago. I don't actually know. So this guy... Came across my desk, as you said. <laughs> I was just scrolling on Instagram. This guy came up. I was like, he's so hot and funny. <laughs> just scrolling on Instagram. I love it. <laughs> he just got served to me, and I thought this clip was, like, very funny. And I was showing him to Allie Colbert, and I was like, how do I, like, slide in there and talk to him? And I was talking to her, like, about shared interests. And I was like, well, I'll just see who he follows. So I go to his follower list. So this is somebody who's pretty active on Instagram and has, like, a decent follower list. Okay. Like, probably follows, like, a 1,000 people. Okay. So he's not somebody that's just, like, not on a lot, follows 40 people. Mm-hmm. We didn't share one single follow wild and so my question to Wait, you, you hold on why was he served you is he a comedian or a podcaster or he does some content like creator comedy commentary and not one common follow not one common That's follow insane. and so if i you're in the same world sort of he's not a comedian but it was just like comedic commentary yeah. on something and so i was like scrolling through and i also follow almost 900 people so i have a very substantial mm-hmm. following list so my question to you is if you go to somebody's follows and you both have like a substantial amount of things you follow 
and you are not sharing one single follow, could you date that person? Well, I could introduce them to a lot, but I need to know if they're following just bikini models, Instagram thoughts, yeah. that type of thing. I, so yes. that is where it's less about the mutual interest and more about what are you following that I'm not following. I immediately go to like the verified accounts and that's just easier for me to pick yeah. out, obviously. But like, I think a lot of guys will follow sports, which I just don't. Yeah. You know, I mean, other than like the Steelers and Barstool, I'm not following a lot of sports accounts. If you're not following any comedy that I follow, I find that odd because you and I follow yeah. so many comedians. And isn't just like Instagram just about like laughing a lot? I, yeah. I mean, listen, I have felt like I got to cut back because my whole feed is clips. clips and stuff. And I'm just like, OK, I love watching and supporting my friends, of course, and seeing what's going on in the comedy world. But there's a point where I'm like, oh, my God. And then there's a part of me that's like, Has everybody got a special but me. You know, like just kinda, <laughs> you just start to get like warped about what you're seeing in your feed and what's Definitely. being served to you. But, you know, that's I'll have a special one day. I'm not out here really trying. So it's not that kind of thing. But there's a point where you're like, OK, it's just a lot. It's like overload. But I just would want to know who he's following. Is he following news? Like you said, sports, music. Is he following musical artists? Mm-hmm. Like, is he following? And like design accounts, my boyfriend follows like design well, stuff. Well, I, I follow a lot of design stuff, right? Car I, stuff, I well, right? Like, I feel like people have very like men have like buckets that I'm never gonna be in. Like, I'm never gonna follow a lot of sports, cars, food. Is he doing any food? So, no, the what food is thing he following? is weird because, like, I think it's totally <laughs> fine if somebody like I follow a lot of like art and architecture, like home interiors type of stuff, a couple of fashion brands, but like my main follows are probably like food, art, and comedy, yeah. And if we're not all, I don't care if you follow like us weekly, but like, what are we doing? Well, I also wonder what he's using Instagram for. Like, here's the thing. If you were following 300 people and they're all just your friends, like some Mm -hmm. people still want to use Instagram as an old school Facebook social network, but 900, you don't have 900 friends. That's why I'm saying like the number matters. Yeah. And who are they following? And I'm immediately scrolling through the verified accounts and seeing how many like butthole models they follow. (laughs) I got to see this. So Allie and I were like going through it and can you date somebody you don't follow anything that they follow? No. And here's why I cannot date him. He is gay. Oh. <laughs> well, there's that. It's still, I mean, it still not doesn't make any sense he wouldn't follow the same food or comedy accounts that I do. What was but that Allie whole and I were conversation like, Allie and I were unpacking the whole thing and then I was like, oh, he's gay. I did not know what I thought you were going to say. I- I was just like, he's a Trump supporter. Like, I literally thought you were going to say, like, he's MAGA. Or... That's probably the first thing I'm looking for. Before the, like, booty models is, are you following, like, politicians that yeah. I don't believe in their a beliefs? hundred percent. That's the first thing I'm <laughs> following. <laughs> like, evangelical Christian church. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of pro-life accounts. <laughs> yeah, are you following that shit? <laughs> are you um, following Fox News? Like, are you following people that I just I don't support their beliefs? That's the first thing. If we don't have similar hobbies, I guess, like you said, your boyfriend's into cars. I don't care. You being into cars, it's harmless. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a decent <laughs> hobby. <laughs> It's like it's not a huge deal breaker. I guess it's harmless. Oh, my whole family, all car guys. Okay. But I think he always followed a few like comedians and stuff. Like, yeah, I don't know if we'd vibe. Again, if you don't, you only have a few hundred followers. They're all your friends. I'm not hating on that. But if you're following people in the zeitgeist and we have no overlap, I am wondering. But it's not a deal breaker for me unless they're just like you said, a bunch of butthole models. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. Like, I don't know how it happens that you have no crossover with somebody. Yeah. Food or comedy. Yeah. So anyways, I was just curious if you could date somebody you don't follow any of the same stuff. All right. Well, guys, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Okay. I have something I want to discuss. So we were on the beach Saturday with a bunch of girlfriends. It was really fun. And we were talking to this one friend of ours about this guy she's been recently hooking up with. Did you drop and- his name? No. <laughs> She said we could, what? No, God, no. Because he's kind of a person in the world, whatever, (laughs) that elder millennials would know. Yeah. If you're 25, don't worry about it. You don't know who it is. I asked somebody 35 yesterday. Yeah, it's like 40, 42 is probably the sweet spot, maybe Mm -hmm. 40 to 45. Anyway, he was like on a TV show. It's not important. Listen, we're not going to tell you guys who it is. But she said she was blowing him and he (laughs) came. So she's telling a story. She is funny, but she still surprises me. She goes, I'm going to tell the story with like a full act out because I've been telling it in restaurants and I can't do the full thing. And I was thinking like, you hang out with us where you can't talk about sex in restaurants. Like I was like, where is this going? Did not know what she meant. She (laughs) did his cum sound. (laughs) It it was a blood curdling scream. And she did that on the beach. And there was probably 20 people there. A bunch of people we didn't know. She's screaming on the beach. She did a full act out. I was like, oh my god you know you're like looking around you're like "Eh, oh she's going for it she did full send mimicked this guy's come screams 
It was shocking. He's like hollering and loud while he's coming. Our friend's boyfriend is a doctor. And we were like, does it sound like he's okay? Right. Like she thought something was wrong. She goes, oh my God. Like I was like, does someone break in? You know, like what's <laughs> happening? And then she said like, if a guy is coming that hard and I'm, his dick is in my mouth, I'm like, I'm about to get waterboarded. Like there's a tidal wave coming. You know, like there's a tsunami that's about to happen. I'm covering my eyes and plugging my nose. And she said like barely anything came out. <laughs> A dust bunny is what our friends were. Yeah, our friends were like, blew a little dust out. Which none of this is judgment. You should be able to come however you want. You're not going to come shame. I don't. Of course not. <laughs> I can't be out here coming. Like I'm going to come shame somebody as soon as you're done because he did you dirty. Yeah, that you could shame anybody for anything totally. once they fuck you over. <laughs> hey, I think he really did. He was an Austin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come up later today, guys, with our guest. But yes, he was an Austin, which you guys know, Raina loves an Austin. But. Yeah, like, however you come, you should be able to, able to let loose. You know, like, there's moments where I wake up, especially if I've been drinking, and the next morning I'm like, what was she doing last night? You know what I mean? And uh-huh. did the neighbors here. Yeah. But, yeah, like, she said he was, like, hollering, and then it just didn't really coincide with the mouth again. <laughs> When our friend's boyfriend said he blew out a dust bunny. Can you imagine? <gasps> and then you're like, <laughs> it's just like a little squirt. I, I have so many would you rathers. Okay, would you rather? <laughs> would you rather a teeny little baby bit of cum? Because you're swallowing it. It's going in your mouth. Exactly, yeah. But you judge them a little bit if it's just like... Or, like, a ton of cum. I always prefer a ton of cum. I just think it's a sign of, like, <laughs> respect. In some cultures, it's a sign of respect. <laughs> Not at all what I was going <laughs> to... It's a chef's kiss. No, I think it's, like, you know, it means you got to... What's the word? Like vitality youthfulness it's youthful it's like i want a lot of cum like i want to be super wet yeah so i Just like doused in as it. much as i'm like you know don't love sitting on the toilet waiting for it to plop out uh-huh. like i still think it's nice i want tons of it i know you love tons of cum <laughs> i dated this guy i mean sometimes it doesn't have to do with vitality sometimes i mean i guess there's I all kinds of things going on with the body but i did that one guy yeah. in my 20s and he just would like come like a drip every time i go to the bathroom afterward nothing would come out i, I would be like be honest are you coming <laughs> can't relate can't relate i love like when it's a ton of it comes out of you you're like good for me well, and then that. you're like then you get to kind of tell him you're like babe wow <laughs> That was a lot. Right. It's They're a all proud of themselves. It's a, it is. Okay. But next... it's like it goes back to what I want to be happening with my body. I know those two aren't correlated and I'm not out here squirting, but like I've had some times where I've just been like really stressed out and a lot going on and I feel like I'm not getting as lubricated and I don't like it. You know, I feel like my body's not working like I want it to, mm-hmm. you know, and so I just think – Again, and this, as you age, less cum, less lubrication, of course. But, like, I'm just, like, the wetter the better for everybody. I agree. Okay, would you rather? Okay. Weird, crazy cum sounds, but they're encouraging, at least. Or dead, silent cummer. Always weird, crazy, loud. Like, well, hold on. There's a line. I know, because, like, my Austin, it was, like, so pro... It was a long cummer, too. It it felt performative. Yeah, It felt, like, weird. It takes you out of it. I'm always going to come before the guy. I mean, obviously, they're not going to come, and then I'm going to come. Like, it felt like... (laughs) Like if, finger you, but it yeah. felt like weirdly performative. He, I'm like, oh, we're still going. He like took a breath in between to like keep going, I and can't. it was so weird and really took me out of it. I've actually only only once had like a really weird cum sound, and it was like that guy. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I actually don't need crazy cum sounds. I just like something going on. Like I don't like dead silent. I like to hear you're gonna come. Uh-huh. But I don't really think I've had too many experiences with guys where it's like. Oh! Like, yeah. it's just, like, or, like, yeah, a like grunting or, like, when I'm listening to our erotic audio in the Vibes Only app, making notes in the scripts, like, there's a fine line. And there's been times where I have to tell our editor, like, cut off four seconds of his coming. <laughs> like, he just went for it. So I guess I don't want dead silence ever, you know. Me either. I think it's crazy to come and not say anything. But I don't really need a bunch of noises. I'm more on the... I just want you to tell me. Like, I like words more than noises. Yeah, I like, I'm just going to come. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to stifle somebody. If you're having a good time, like, let it rip. That's what I'm saying. But, I'm, I'm not, I don't want, I mean. But there's a part of what she gives me the ick, you know? Right. Like, where I'm just like, I can't have type two fun with this. 
Yeah. Like, I'm fine with it sort of in the moment, but I can't, like, masturbate to you because this is, gives me the ick. <laughs> what about when it's just, like, the come down? Literally, it's just so, like, uh, like, they're doing, it's, like, it's so elongated. After they come, they're still inside of you? They just, like, why is there still sounds coming they're out of your body? They're moaning and groaning? Yeah, like, it's just, like, I think that's what you dealt with, just really prolonged sounds. So crazy. I, like, thank God we only had sex once because that was so – I couldn't have done that again. I acknowledged it the first time. I was like, so that was a lot. And he was like, I just really liked it. It felt really good. She acknowledged it with him, right? And she was like, are you okay? And he was like, it just yeah, feels really good. Yeah, it feels really good. And, again, like, this is not shaming because I think – I mean, you think of old Sex and the City, Samantha Jones. Like, she was, like, screaming at the top of her lungs, you know, when she was coming. And I grew up on that, you know? I mean, when I'm about to have an orgasm, I don't know me. Yeah. Who is she? Who is she? Exactly. So maybe they're having out-of-body experiences as well. Also, Rainy used to tell that story about the long comer at our shows. <laughs> and then we would have women act out their partner's cum sounds. <laughs> it was one of the most fun things we did at our shows is come to the shows because we'll be having all new, fun, hilarious segments in the fall tour. But it was so funny. We would just go on the audience with mics and be like, can you make your boyfriend's cum sound? And people would go for it. It was so fucking funny. We did it in Pittsburgh. My mom was sitting in between my dad and my stepdad. I was like, you want to try? <laughs> Yeah, that's so funny. She does both of them and the audience has to guess <laughs> which one's your dad and which one's Chip. <laughs> that is, I'm dead. <laughs> Listen, we might be coming back to Pittsburgh. Yeah, we might be. Maybe your she'll play along does, next time. Does Bill and Chip's come My sound. dad's got a new girlfriend the now. The audience has to guess. My dad's got a new girlfriend. So well, I'm like, her. I'll be like, mom, if you don't do it, she's going to do it. And that's the mom I like better. <laughs> that's my new mom. <laughs> All right, well, let us know in the comments, guys, how you feel about <laughs> yeah. long yeah. coming. Yeah, if you had to choose, like, dead silent or crazy loud long, like, I guess I'd still choose. I just, I need something. So a dead silent person, I feel like one of these things is more malleable, though. A dead silent person, you could still kind of get them to start saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to come. Mm -hmm. Although, listen, people that are just don't emote during sex that much, like, I have not had an easy time getting them to. Mm -hmm. So, like... I don't know. Both of those things are hard to deal with because, like, everybody I've slept with that, like, doesn't really talk a lot during sex, it's hard to, like, request it on the menu and get mm. them to be a totally different person. People can change, I will say. Like, people can definitely, like, I don't know. If they're 45, probably not. But, yeah. you know, I do think people can do more what you want, but not always. So. Yeah. But up to your point, if you have, like, someone that's really doesn't dirty talk, like, more dead silent, I know in my experience, like, it can get better. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, a... He's a willing participant. Yeah, exactly. Well, I loved our... Oh, two updates. Okay, number one, uh, a ton of you DM me. Wawa does do wraps now. Okay. I've been getting an avalanche of DMs. Yes, we talked about my Wawa and Royal Farms love triangle a couple weeks ago, and I got a bunch of DMs too that Wawa just, they do offer wraps, which I feel like I should have known that, but you know what? Listen, we had a little bit of a conflict. Yeah, I didn't know. We were on a break. Yeah. We were at well, Wawa we and I were on a break, here. so I didn't know about the wraps. We also moved out here. We're just not exactly. Out of the exactly. The second update is that I said I bought a hat that said Caviar Daddy, and it actually was Caviar Cowboy. Okay. But our editor Anna said she really liked Caviar Daddy, and so I made her a hat and sent it to her. Oh, you did. So if you guys are dying for Caviar Daddy hats, let us know, and I'll make them. I'll put them on our website. <laughs> They're cute. I like Caviar Daddy and Caviar Cowboy, both of them. Anna really liked Caviar Daddy, and she was like, she was like, the lesbians will love it. So I was like, F fine. <laughs> So I made her a hat that said Caviar Maybe Daddy we'll and sent it to her. Yeah. We are definitely entering our cowboy era, like as a collective because of Beyonce. I ordered cowboy boots last night. I ordered a denim corset. I would like to say what I have done for bald men and cowboy culture. Yeah. I have loved men in cowboy hats. Okay, let me ask you a question. I swear to God, we can move on. I really kind of hate the statement, I liked X thing before it was cool. It wasn't cool then. I don't know what to tell you. But I yeah. did. I liked bald men yeah. way before it was cool. And I have <laughs> loved cowboys since way before it was cool. Okay, 100%. I, A man in a cowboy hat? I know. Ugh. Well, and you've been inspired by Beyonce and other celebrities, but you were even wearing a lot more like cowgirl type stuff <laughs> before Texas Hold'em came out. Oh, my God. Way before that. The guy that I dated in Charleston always had a cowboy hat mm -hmm. on and Dallas Business Card guy. Yeah. Cowboy hat. I didn't like it in LA, though. What he about the Connecticut cowboy? cowboy? <laughs> He I cannot wait to be in. back out on tour. Oh yeah, my girl, God. I'm telling you. Let's have more stops. Okay. Okay. All right, now we can get into the episode. Okay. Well, not yet. I'm going to tell you. Now we're going to about our partners, and then we are going to get into the episode. <laughs> Anna, keep that. Okay. Article. So I just moved, which meant I was just seeing my article pieces go from one home to the next. And I just love articles so much. And this is just such a go-to. So even last night, I was just needing to buy some bar stools. And like, it's just sometimes hard to think of 
where to get furniture, you know? Like, I think we can name like two or three furniture stores, but I just want to always hype Article. Just go to article.com and really find whatever you need. They'll show you how to style it. Their curated assortment of mid-century modern, coastal, industrial, Scandi, and boho designs makes furniture shopping simple. They offer fast, affordable shipping across the U.S. and Canada. They cut out the middleman, so their prices are really great for the high, high quality. They have a knowledgeable customer care team. The deliveries have been so great. I'm just trying to think of a few things I've gotten recently. I have outdoor furniture from Article. I got this filing cabinet that I love. I have this amazing like mirror decor piece that's going to go above the fireplace in my bedroom. I'm so excited to hang it. You have this beautiful white boucle couch. Yeah, I just got it. I love it. They've been a partner forever. We love them so much. And again, if you feel like you don't have a lot of home decor style, you really just can just go to their website where they'll show you how to style it. But also they have an Instagram feed where they show how other people have styled the article pieces in their homes. The headboards are incredible. Great place to get stuff for your bedroom. All the way to the living room, all the way to outdoor, of course. And we're just obsessed. Like we can't recommend it enough. So if you're looking for anything, check article first. And great little like accessories, like just the like ottoman poof I have that's oh, outdoor. You look at it and you're like, that's not gonna be sturdy. My feet are just gonna sink into that. It's like really like a just cushy little mm-hmm. ottoman coffee table. I'm obsessed with it. So article is offering you fifty dollars off your first purchase of one hundred dollars or more. To claim, visit article.com slash GGE and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash GGE for fifty dollars off your first purchase of one hundred dollars or more. And last but certainly not least is base my truly my favorite way to pack and I'm like a very nervous packer I start to have like a meltdown I stress out so much and the thing that makes me feel like so much better is knowing that I have like the right size luggage functional luggage beautiful luggage and Mm -hmm. base has like solved all that everything in my house is base I continue to purchase more and more from them my 29 inch check-in roller is theirs their weekender bag is fantastic just to like throw into your car for the weekend they really have just thought of everything the wheels are 360 degree gliding wheels the handles on their suitcases are cushioned it's just next level so nice to use them there's a built and weight indicator and I love their they provide washable bags for your dirty clothing it's such a good hack for traveling is bringing a bag for the dirty clothing everything comes in multiple sizes and colors it's functional it's beautiful everything I've ever gotten from them is, is sturdy and I travel so 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 much Ashley and I are just like always on a plane mm-hmm. and so it's really important to me to have stuff that's functional and looks beautiful so I really can't recommend base enough and whether you want a quick trip or you want to breeze through the security line they have everything covered for you get it for your long distance partner to encourage them to come visit you more. It's an incredible gift. I got Sparkle Eyes of Suitcase for Valentine's Day. We bought one for Tessa for Christmas. Oh, yeah, for Tessa. It's just, it's yeah, great gift. Luggage is a great gift. Mm-hmm. And one thing, there's the Weekender and the Mini Weekender. I get this question all the time. Does the Weekender, which is big, it's, it's huge. It's big, but it's not too big. And I carry it as my carry on and it does fit under the seat. If you have it like packed full, it won't, but it does fit under the seat, at least Delta and American. And you can flatten it a little bit. It's never really been an issue. It also fits in the overhead bin. But people ask me that a lot. Mm -hmm. I think people really want to know. So yeah, just as long as it's not like stuffed to the brim. Yeah. And it's fantastic. There's a separate compartment for For your your shoes shoes at the bottom. I hate when like my hairbrush touches my shoes. I know. Disgusting. So uh, listen, guys, check it out. Buy it for yourself or for somebody else. It's a great gift. Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash GGE. That's B-E-I-S Travel dot com slash gg okay all right guys we are so excited to welcome our guest today and the topics she brings with her she (laughs) is the host of the wildly popular podcast two hot takes where she and a team of co-hosts scavenger reddit listener write-ins and the rest of the internet to give their hot takes on the juiciest dating relationship and real life am i the asshole situations please welcome to the show morgan absher hello hi Hi. We're so excited. I'm so excited to be here. So we recorded with you, and we had so much fun, and we put it out to our audience, some Emma the Asshole situations. We're going to talk through them with you. We are really excited about this. I think about about your topics all the time. (laughs) I know, me too. After we did your episode, I fully debriefed my boyfriend on every one. I went through every (laughs) one. I went through all four that we did on the episode with you, and then other ones I'd listened to before, some from Hannah Burner's episode. Like, there's such a good conversation piece, and I also recommend 
recommend this for dates if you feel like yeah. you're or in your current relationship, whatever you're working with. If you're ever struggling for something to talk about, this is such a good conversation piece. You really get to know who you're with, <laughs> who your friends are based <laughs> on their responses to these stories. Totally. Yes. Like that's how I started it. I was so annoying. I would send everyone these Reddit posts I would find. I'm like, someone just talk about these with me because like I need to know what you're thinking. This is so crazy. This yeah. can't be real. Who would stay with someone like this? And so it's just like brought me and all my people closer together. And now that's what it does for people that listen. You're so right about dating also, Ashley, because this is sort of like a situational job interview where like instead of yeah. going on a date and saying yeah. like, what do you like to do for fun? What do you do for work? You can say like, here's this situation. Let's unpack it together. And you can almost learn more about a person from like yeah. how they relate to these situations and like yeah. basic get to know you questions. And even just, I don't know, like we were on the beach with all of our girlfriends Saturday and we had plenty to talk about. But I feel like if we had a lull, I'd be like, you guys, <laughs> hear me out. I'm on Reddit and I have the situation. Let's talk about it. And I feel like you could <laughs> Go for hours. Easily. Unpacking. Easily. Well, especially like, oh my God, the ones that have been on there lately, I don't know if it's that time of year, if there's a full moon, <laughs> people are coming out of the wood. Mercury's in retrograde. Something's up. You should bring out an astrologist and be like, tell me what the moon was doing at this time because yeah. this is crazy. I should. Is there like a theme? Like what do you see the most of? Because I'm sure you like pull your audience, ask people to send questions. Is there like one overarching, like I see family dynamics being this thing all the time or like what comes in and is like such a big theme for you? Mother-in-law drama. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like, or in-laws in general, because, mm -hmm. like, that's such a hard dynamic to, like, adapt to. Yeah. is like, meshing, blending families. So in-laws, weddings always create a stir. But those are the big ones. Yeah, we noticed and that. weddings. Because you, and we'll do them today, but we asked our audience, and we know you, like, mostly turn to Reddit. But, like, those were the two prevalent themes were family yeah. and engagement. Engagement. Totally. Yeah, and yeah also, engagements, like, too. But so, okay, you were really into this Am I the Asshole world before you started the podcast? Yeah, it was, right. like, my little depression hobby. Like, because I wasn't <laughs> working. I was just getting done with grad school, and then, like, COVID hit, so I had nothing to do. So I was just on Reddit, just chilling. And so it was, like, just, like, my little brain break just kept me sane and then I was like okay well I can't be the only one that likes this let's start a podcast amazing and it has blown up it's had a moment yeah it's, so it's are up you there even using your degree <laughs> no because you're an occupational therapist right yeah technically yeah I literally went and got a doctorate in it too <laughs> yeah and you're doing this podcast about people on reddit I, know. I love that for you <laughs> I know it feels really Wait, did weird did you not say dr morgan <laughs> no are you a doctor well technically like you <laughs> She said she had a doctorate. Yeah, technically. That, I'm so sorry, you guys. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Morgan Back it Edgar. up. Back it up. Yeah. Thank no. you for being gracious about that. No, Some people well, have been like, um, excuse oh, me. Oh, I would never. Not, I, would, like, I would never stop. No. It's I would not. stop people dead in their tracks. Sorry, I'm a doctor. But I feel like unless you're the doctor that, like, you are getting, right. like, called to a medical emergency on a plane, like, I don't feel like you can be like, I'm a doctor. No, you can't. You sound like an asshole. You sound like a pretentious Dick. Yeah, you yeah. have to let people say it for you. Like Dr. Jill Biden is. <laughs> look not how up humble here. I look now. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she was sitting there the whole time, like this doctor. <laughs> talk kidding, about it. I'm talk about it. Drop OT. Am I the asshole? Because I make people call me doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that in my future. Yeah, but I did OT and the podcast for about a year. I was actually working downtown here at a hospital, but podcast got too busy, and I had a choice, and I went podcast. I love this story. It's crazy. It's Eight. actually crazy when you think about it. What is your degree in, Ashley? I mean, marketing, I guess. Is it? Mine too. No, I know it is. But it's just like, what am I even? <laughs> that was so I never long used ago. It. I'm just like laughing because I just never used my degree ever. Yeah. College was important for me. What else was I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I needed to go somewhere and grow up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I excelled. But I, it's also changed since marketing in the yeah. early 2000s. Like, there I was know. no even social media. So it wasn't like, We were you learning know. about billboards back yeah. then. Yeah. Bill outdoor. <laughs> like, true Benches. ad agencies. Yeah. Is like what's that, that is movie what I learned. With the original one with Mel Gibson, What Women Want. What Women Want. Yeah. And then of course, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Like all I cared about was living that life. Yeah. Like, I was like, I want to wear a pencil skirt and oh, go work at a magazine. Um, <laughs> I moved to New York and they were like, you can wear the pencil skirt. You're going to make $35,000 a year, man. You're going to work in a oh, restaurant. Yeah. Hurts. Okay. And you're engaged. Yes. And can we just hear a little background on your fiance? Your, yeah. <laughs> your relationship? Yeah. So we met on Hinge six years ago almost now. Okay. He was from Minnesota. I was from Minnesota, but like both out in LA now. Mm -hmm. But that's what pulled me in. I'm like, mm, Minnesota. Like he'll be down to earth. It'll be good. Totally. So, swiped. And then 
I just like didn't take the app seriously. So I, I started ignoring him. And then he kind of pulled like the Minnesota guilt trip. He's like, well, you know, I saw you're from Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota. I just moved here. I'm looking for new, you know, friends. And I was like, oh, fine. <laughs> but I ended up like canceling my first date with him like multiple times. And then I was like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going back to Minnesota, you know, whatever. And he's like, oh, I'll be there too. So our oh. first date was in Minnesota okay. at like my favorite college bar, Cowboy Jack's. But I thought Aww. he really just wanted to be friends. So we kept hanging out a couple of times and he like put his hand on my leg at a movie and I was like, oh, okay, not friends. Okay, but literally we should unpack that. That's how you know. Yeah. A hand on the leg is crossing I like, over. I was like, oh, fuck. Okay, this, he means business now. So You just um, thought you were friends. I just thought we were friends. You went on the first date and you guys yeah. left and you'd been like drinking a little bit. No kiss, no attempt Nothing. at anything. Nothing. Just just a just nice polite. to meet Minnesota you. Nice. Yeah. yeah. We love, we're obsessed. We yeah, love Nice to meet you. Big but fans. he left the first date because he actually had like a friend in town. So he left the first date and like his friend met back up with him and he's like, get the wedding invites ready. Like after About the you? first date. Yeah. Oh my so God. So he knew he immediately. Knew he played it a little. Yeah. I think I love the strategy. Yeah. So we ended up like kind of loosely dating for like three months. He asked me to be his girlfriend. I said no. I wasn't ready. What? I wasn't ready. I just like didn't know what I wanted. I'd been single. I was having fun. Yeah, for I sure. I had like a friends with benefits that I still was kind of into. And so I had both of them kind of like I was mostly seeing my fiance Justin and then yeah. would see the friends with benefits occasionally. And then it took Halloween. I like hooked up with the friends with benefits one last time and I was like that was fucking terrible. That's not how it's supposed to be. Wait, I think I do like Justin. Okay. And then I agreed to date him like around the holidays that year. And we've been together ever you since. You bring back up the conversation. You're like, I'd love to circle back on that girlfriend <laughs> ass. <laughs> and confirm. Yeah. No, Can literally. Yeah, up? I literally, I was like, I guess I'll be your girlfriend now. <laughs> like I just brought it up casually. I'm like, yeah, like my family keeps saying boyfriend and I'm kind of tired of correcting people. So I guess I'll be your girlfriend now. For the optics. And he was really excited. I'm so. laughing thinking about him story. proposing to you and you being like, I don't really want to. Uh, call back. <laughs> call back yes. to when I wouldn't be your girlfriend. Right. <laughs> and you have to, when you're ready, just like, we'd love to bring that back up. Raina loves an Ustin, by the way. Okay, okay. Not I love J names and I like mm. Ustin. She likes a Justin or a Dustin. Mm -hmm. Oh. We always said if your name is Dustin and you've worked at a Cheesecake Factory, Raina has fucked you. That's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I don't think my Dustin worked at a Cheesecake Factory. He was though. he worked at somewhere else. You worked at the Cheesecake Texas Factory. Texas Roadhouse. At the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> what he restaurant did and you I. Work at? It's called Hyde Park. It's a steakhouse in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. But mm -hmm. yes, I love a a J name or an Austin. I'll let them ruin my life. Yeah, this time. is my third Justin. So <laughs> is it really? That's yeah. Like so you have a type. I didn't even realize though until like Saturday. I was like, wait, there was another Justin before the other one. And then so like this is number three. Yeah, I have a few names like. Eric and Chris and Matt. Eric, Chris, and Matt. And the, then, yeah. which is not my boyfriend now. But, like, for the by dating history, and then you were Mike. Mike, 100% of the time. And I have oh. no mics. I have exclusively mics. Like, I don't have a mic. And Austin's, but, yeah. More than a quarter of the roster. More than a third of the roster is named Mike or Michael. I had a lot of Jareds. Really? really? Yeah. Have I ever Jared had Freed, a Jared? you guys were breaking the news. I'm kidding. No, not Jared <laughs> Freed. Love it. Love it, but no. I can see you guys having a good like podcasting rapport. Oh my god, he's so funny. Yeah. yeah. He's just such a good time. And just so nice. Yeah, we love him so much. J multiple Jareds. Yeah, have multiple Jared. Jared? I've never done Jared and Zero I've always Jared. wanted to. Hot name. Jared. Usually. It's an interesting one. I like really now that I'm thinking about it, like want to understand the origin. Cause Minnesota, it's like a lot of Scandinavian hockey bros Got so it. that's mm -hmm. what both of mine were oh j names are always hot to me jack jason i Jared, like jack Justin. just j jack so hot so jack hot. is Never. really underrated yeah. my real turn <laughs> <laughs> my real turn delaware <laughs> jack. he looks he's like sexy. he's straight out of yellowstone yes uh, he does Raina would come with me sometimes to see houses i was looking at buying he'd just be like leaning up against the house she's like Phew, it's unfair i look at him i'm like damn it He's anyway, like, he's kids and wife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shoot. He's not available. So sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. Well, we did want to just ask your relationship story. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. I yeah. Love hinge success story. I know. I've met a lot recently. I'm like, okay, Hinge. Yeah. Do Sponsor you... my wedding. Let's go. Oh, oh yeah. You, you definitely should. Sure. Do you ever have this moment where you're like, I almost didn't let this work out? Like, I almost passed this up. Like, yeah. It's like I've had that sometimes with my current partner where I'm like, there were a couple times along the way where, like, I could have almost let this slip away and, like, thank God. Like, it almost, like, thank God he just knew – he knew or something, right? A lot of guys, you turn down a date ask. That's it. Well, he was crushed when I told him no. Yeah. Like, 
we were at a Kings game. We had a New York trip planned coming up. Mm-hmm. And he was like, who am I going to like tell people I'm going to New York with? Like, And I played dumb because I knew where he was going. But like, I played really dumb. And I was like, oh, I don't know, like your friend Morgan. He's like, well, he's like, I'd love to, you know, say you're my girlfriend, Morgan. Like, would you be my girlfriend? And I was yeah. like, no. He thought I was like, no, and then like didn't want to see him again. Oh. So he left and he was crushed. Yeah. So if he would have taken that as like a no to everything, done. Right. Like, But even like, didn't you say he asked you on a date the first time and you said yeah. no? Like. That could have been it too. Like all these times along the way, you were really fighting. I was it. really self sabotaging. Like no, 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 she's gonna be my wife. Like how do these guys just know? Sometimes I don't know. They like the chase. They're like, I'll wear it down. No woman has ever been like, I'll wear them down. That's no. never happened in these. No, it a time. we've seen it a few times. Sometimes oh. I was on my computer because I was looking up this book that I'm currently in the middle of. It's a Taylor Jenkins read book. She wrote the Seven Husbands of Evelyn oh, okay. Hugo, but she wrote this book maybe in another life. And the first like three pages are this girl goes like she moves back to LA and she's about to leave the bar and she can leave the bar with like her friend or her like high school crush and then the rest of the book every other chapter is like who she left the bar with I like that and like how her life turned out and I've been thinking about this so much just these like very small decisions that we make in life and what we say no or yes to it's like the butterfly effect it really it actually when I start thinking about it it really messes me up me too I think about it all the time I'm like oh my god there was a movie on Netflix too with Lily Reinhardt that's that same. Like, I loved plot. it. It didn't get good reviews. I, I thought it was perfect. I thought it was really good. I recommended it on the podcast, and I got some DMs of people being like, "I hated that movie." What's I, it called? Oh, stuff like this is my absolute. Look both ways. Favorite. Yeah, it's my absolute favorite. I loved it. I thought it was really good. It was just like frustrating because it was like you're just watching and you know where it's going. And you're just like you just want to shake her. Yeah, but I. I really liked it. Yeah. Um, like, I almost didn't go on the trip where we met. I don't know. We just... Can't I actually it. almost skipped the trip where I met Ashley. We both almost skipped it. Yeah. And I just, like, they moved the trip so that I could go on the trip. I was famous. <laughs> People used to care about me back then. <laughs> but, like, it just goes to show, like, do you, do you believe in fate? Are yes. You kind of, are you... Okay. Because I'm like, I'm like that. I'm like... The universe is pulling some strings. Like, there's such a thing as fate. It just, it has to be. I think about how Ashley met her boyfriend all the time. And, like, it's this whole thing. We'll tell them on the podcast one day. But, like, if I had made a different decision with her that day, we would have never met him. Yeah. Like, if I had encouraged her to do, like, one different thing. Yeah. We would have never met him. And they've been together for almost a year now. Like, it's so crazy to me. I know. I, like, shudder to think. (laughs) He knew. Okay. So... We want to talk about some of these Am I the Assholes that we crowdsource from our listeners. I love it. I'm so ready. We could have literally done all engaged or all family or all female friends, but we tried to mix it up. But we do have two engagement ones. I mean, it doesn't matter if you give a shit about getting engaged or not. They're so fun to dissect and talk about. I could talk about every one of these for so long. Should I kick it off? Yeah, kick it off. Okay. (laughs) This one's just like short and funny, but okay, here we go. My fiance had a profile for his ex on HBO now called Max, you guys. But I asked him to delete it because I hated seeing her name pop up every time I sign in to watch. And he said, who cares? Let her watch HBO for free. I let it roll for a few months, (laughs) even though we live together. Needless to say, we're married now and the profile has been deleted. But am I the asshole for asking? If your answer is yes, I respectfully disagree. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's obviously the asshole here. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. And then she signed it. No longer need the HBO ho. I would have changed the name. I wouldn't have been able to look at it. It's annoying. You would have changed the name, but not kicked her off the account. I mean, if if he's the one paying for it it's not my money you know whatever yeah. if you're splitting it fuck no she's getting deleted today oh my god she's it's, still venmoing him yeah can you imagine <laughs> if just was paying for hbo you'd let his ex be on the account with you i'd change the name but like if he was gonna put up a fit but like i'd be annoyed and i'd be fighting over it i would never let it go <laughs> would, this was i don't even i can't even picture this because i would not be able to grasp it like why the, why what are you what's still going on here i feel like it's one of those things where it's like you you either don't want to be mean to her which it's like that's not even mean that's just like life you broke up move on yeah but like why don't you want to remove her like why do you want to continue being nice like are you holding out hope yeah. Are you still kind of like you want to see what she's up to? What are you checking the HBO? Like right. I would be I would have more questions, but it's like if you're really if you're not gonna delete her, then what can I do about it? I, f- I feel like the hard rule is the ex has got to go when you get a new partner. I mean, if you want to keep your ex on your HBO or your your Max, or your Netflix or whatever, that's fine. But then a new partner comes along and then yeah, they have to see it. 
Yeah, I don't need to see it. There's no reason for you to be communicating with your ex in any way when we are in a relationship. And that includes paying for her subscription. <laughs> right. like, yeah. Also, like, I am the queen of mooching subscriptions off yeah, of other people. So many people pay for my subscriptions. <laughs> and I, as somebody who's in the culture, could just continue to mooch this off of somebody else. And none of them are my exes. And I just don't think there's a reason for us to, like, be in each other's lives. And, like, this to me is almost like it's too familiar. Like, he could go into her HBO and see what she's watching. And he could text her and be like, how are you liking the current season of yeah. Succession or whatever? And I don't need you guys interacting like that. No. And I'm not, like, nobody I've ever dated would call me a jealous person. I'm just not. And I date people that I trust or I don't date them. But, yeah. like, there's no reason for you to be here. Yeah. I mean, his response of who cares, let her watch HBO for free. I mean, I guess my only thing is there's like a, there is a world in which this like there's a few guys I can think of that are just so trustworthy like I, I don't know I'm kind of thinking of like Rob he wouldn't do this but like our fr- friend Rob I don't know he's just like the most trustworthy guy like he's married yeah. he has a child but it's like he's phones out he's a million girlfriends mm-hmm. like he's not friends with his exes I would actually never see him in this position but there's a, I guess there's a certain type of guy that you're like he literally just it's not a thing and I can't really fault him for it but it's like very rare it feels genuine to me this like who cares let her watch hbo yeah. for free feels very on its, the surface it's like, like whatever. that is really how he feels about it like i'm paying for it anyways like who cares but i don't need this halo of her around our relationship no this is oh god people are gonna like be yelling at me but i actually like really hate when people share pets after they break up oh like, we could talk about this forever you yeah. need a contingency plan or yeah. don't get a pet with someone that you're dating get your dog and it's your dog but like I hate when people are like yeah we still share custody no. of a dog a- after dating for a year okay so th- the dog is now older than your relationship was and you're sharing yeah. this dog I have such no strong opinions no one wants to fucking deal with that no and also like there are a million other dogs in the world. So R- many rescue dogs another need dog. Home. They yeah. need homes. Yeah. But yeah. I follow this woman. I guess, I mean, it's her and her dog. His name is Simon Sitz. And he's a rescue and he's special needs. And I'm like obsessed with him. But she's definitely turned into doing a lot more dog lifestyle content, which I love how she's pivoted. And she posted this thing. I shared it on my story. I got a ton of DMs about it. And it was just like, if you are going to get a dog with somebody, decide before you take that dog home who gets it when you break up. Yeah. You, you might not. But like, if when you break up. Sharing custody with exes of a pet is wild to me. It's so I don't crazy. care if people come for me again, like because at the end of the day, it's give another pet a new home if you want another pet. Like you've got to decide that going in. It gets so dicey with the new partners. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking to a couple and like one person has a new partner and the ex was is coming over. They have a key to get the dog. No. Because they walk no. the dog and stuff. That's just that's too much for me. Like I'll take the HBO account any day of the week over Absolutely. sharing custody of well, a that dog. Not with in our someone. home. We're not sharing belongings. I I can't really speak to it because I've never shared a pet with a, a significant other, but after a breakup, I just I really want a clean break. I don't clean want break. reasons to be texting each other. Yeah. I don't actually want you to have access to my life in the sense that I'm saying, like, well, I'm gonna be out for dinner, so I need you to come into the house and get this. I'm gonna be out of town. Can you take this dog? I I don't want somebody to have access to me that no. way. And I don't need you whelming around my life either and I don't want to know about it. it's painful breakups are really hard I need a break from same you with that. kids yeah. you just have to decide one person takes it I'm kidding um, <laughs> I was like where's she going like, with this no, you just we're really going there no I'm just, can you imagine I'm like I don't believe in joint custody there's, there's, there's only one situation which I I guess I have some leniency towards if you like you have a difficult dog that really doesn't board well or do yeah. well and you are going on a vacation and the ex is the person they trust the most yeah. and I don't hate it because I've been there but that's a one-off the situation. sharing and not pre-planning like yeah. my, my yeah. number one thing above all is when you get that pet together especially when you're not married you have paperwork yep like what are we doing I mean it's the same it's a prenup like yeah most people break up yeah Half. Prepare. I used to be so against prenups, and now I'm like, I'm team prenup. I love it. Oh, we are. Absolutely. Just prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Yeah. Like, you can imagine this great life with this person, but like, what if, right? Just like, don't. Don't be left in the dark. Don't don't let the state issues. decide what's going to happen to yeah. you. Yeah, or even like now, I think everyone should do like advanced healthcare directives. Mm. So like, if you have been with your partner for five years, you're not married yet. Make sure they make you their medical decision maker or allow you to be in the hospital because if their family doesn't like you you're banned from the hospital Mm, if they're in a coma Mm -hmm. you're fucked you have no decision making the family can move them wherever they want like 
you don't mm. get anything. Yeah, so, I learned that Dr. Dad Morgan in here. Here, here we go. Advice. Here we go. Oh, you're a doctor. <laughs> It's so fake. We just though. pivot. We do it's all so medical fake. advice from here on out. She's like, guys, I'm not a medical doctor. <laughs> I learned that a few years ago with my dad because he was hospitalized and he was married, and she is the dumbest person I've ever met in my life. His wife, and she was the one making. Hope she doesn't listen. Oh, no, she's. The oh, worst. I hate her. <laughs> she's I, really I, Okay. Yeah, I hope the worst thing that you can ha- happen to a person. I hope that happens to her. <laughs> oh my but god. But my dad was really like fucked up. He's hospitalized, and she had like full reign, of course, power of attorney, power, whatever. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. even call the hospital and ask questions as his daughter, and she again. I cannot stress it was so stupid and should not be responsible for medical information. Right. Well, so, and the anyways. sad thing is, like, one bad decision can kill someone. Right. Like, sure. oh, if you if you had a stroke, I'm like, early intervention is key. Um, this is my OT brain, but I'm like, yeah, what a fucking bitch. You're right. Well, they're no longer together, so oh, we did it, fam. Yeah, we, we did, did it. it. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm okay. glad we got into the dog thing. I, it's been Me on my too. mind. It really. I can't stand it. My dad shares a dog with his ex-girlfriend. It drives me fucking bonkers. Drives me bonkers. It's too much involved. I guess, listen, there's always exceptions to every rule. And tons of people are like, you know, the relationship's over and we are just friends and we should, fine. But if your new partner has a problem with it, I think it should be open for discussion. If you certainly are not healed from the relationship, it should be open for discussion. I just don't need you whelming around my life. You just, you decide it beforehand. That's all. Then you would avoid this all the way down the road. Like, people are so scared to have these conversations. Like, get realistic about life where half of couples break up have a married couple so even yep. less of just dating yeah. yeah so anyway yeah so kids, and, do- be, kids and dogs figure out who's gonna get it can you imagine like if i had a dog with somebody like the way i'd be like this is my dog or this is your dog like yeah. in writing i'm with you okay now we're going moving into our engagement segment okay next email my <laughs> my boyfriend of six years and i recently flew across the country to visit his family for a week his mom made wedding venue appointments for the three of us to go on we are not engaged <laughs> Oh, that's a subtle hint if I've ever seen one. So six one. years together, not engaged. They're going home. Okay, we're not engaged, although we've discussed it, and it is coming soon. I'm a bit salty. He's taking his sweet time. I said I didn't want to go visit any venues because we're not engaged, so I didn't go. Am I the asshole? Did he still go with his mom, though? So I that's all we have, and I do, oh. I, I do email people back a lot. And, like, Sometimes, ask, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm a nosy, on one, yeah. I'm a nosy bitch. Okay. No, I, so well, you need the information. Context is, like, really important. <laughs> if, now I gotta know if they went with Well, her. I want to know if the mom and son went. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not the asshole. I think it's a little bit cart before the horse, but, like, I know some people that buy their wedding dresses before they're engaged, but that's, well, that's their decision. Right. It's not their mother-in-law trying to like light a fire under her son's ass and be like you need to propose cuz here's the here's the venue and happens to be available next fall let's do yeah. it i am going to a wedding this summer this is my boyfriend's very close friend mm-hmm. they had the wedding the venue booked and had the date before he proposed but it's they're culturally yeah it's not a Western wedding, if you will. It's, this is a callback to Morgan's episode oh my where, God. where we got a country where Western we had wedding. a really idiotic <laughs> moment. If you guys listen, it's so embarrassing. But anyway, so or it's Eastern, it's, but not Western. They're not wearing chaps. Yes, it's okay. not country it's not Western. Country Western. <laughs> country Western. Okay, there we go. It's a different culture. It's yeah, not just like a, not your you traditional know, Western Christian or American. <laughs> yeah, not your traditional Western <laughs> wedding. So I did ask because I thought it was interesting, and it just wasn't weird for them so I always wanted to just throw that into the mix and like yeah. the engagement culturally is more in like sitting down with the families and just kind of discussing it and it feels a little bit more like it's not an arranged marriage by any stretch but it just is a little bit different but I don't think that's what we're dealing with here I think we're dealing with like standard she wants to get engaged yeah. you know wants it to feel like somewhat of a surprise and here they are the mom is like we got to get a venue booked yeah I, I would I would be the same. I think the mom, she, you'd be the, the same the, as the girl. Yeah. I'm not going. I'd be annoyed and I'd be yeah. like, hey, like Cheryl, talk to your son. <laughs> like, as excited right. as you are for us to get married, like, if you really want to apply some pressure, like, have a conversation with him, but don't make this like about me because, like, that's also salt in the wound. It's not fun looking at wedding stuff. It's not fun being Absolutely. asked when you're getting engaged a million fucking times because it's like, you want it. You've waited six years. I told my fiance, I go, if it doesn't happen by year five, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I was like, I love Mm -hmm. you. But like, if you're not aligned with me, like, I'm not wasting any more time. 
So ugh. it sounds like a real point of contention that they are not engaged. She says, I'm salty about it. It's been six yes. years. It hasn't been one year, two years. We haven't talked about this. She is upset. She wants this ring. And you're just like, you said, pouring salt in the wound. Yeah. Of, By the way, you are not engaged. And I don't know, maybe he said to his mom, like, I am planning on doing it. So, like, let's get a job. There's, like, no communication where I can understand where this would, like, have ever even gotten communicated to this girl. I'm yeah. going deeper with it. This is completely not how I'd want my man to even be with his mom like I'd be like how did this even come across my desk you know like how (laughs) did this even happen like if the mom suggested this you should have said Hey mom, I haven't proposed yet. Hard no. Right. Don't bring it up to her. So I'm saying, how did like, this even reach? I know. Her? I would be like, how did the conversation yeah. even go with your fucking with, with Cheryl? You know, <laughs> like it's just crazy to me. She's really stepping on toes. Or like maybe has some unclear boundaries with her son. Well, even what you said, like the embarrassment of being at the venue with the venue people yeah. and them saying when's the wedding and you say we're not engaged yet. Like yeah. you're making me feel stupid. You're making me feel crazy because everyone's gonna think and it's crazy. her. Everyone's going to be like, well, that was weird. She came in here. You like, couldn't she's get not... me to do it. Right. Oh, no. And she already You'd have to drag made me there. the appointments. Like, she didn't float, should we go? She made <laughs> appointments already. So she's also, made what if they want a destination calls? wedding? Like, how do you even know? Uh, right. Absolutely. Have you asked me where we should be making a... Right, and, and there are, on. like, mother-in-laws that really overstep, and they're like, I have a bigger friend group. I'm paying for this. I got all the money. I am going to pick what we're doing. Then talk this. to your son. That's... This is so crazy to me. Yeah. Like, if the mom is that type of mom who, like is running shit then make him propose (laughs) yeah yeah this might be the straw for me like if this happened and then it's like the salt it's like okay well why aren't we engaged like your mom thinks we're serious enough right to book venues we're talking about this with every what's, venue manager that we're at. We're at. You're going to explain on. to them why we're not engaged. Actually, that would be funny to go on all those appointments <laughs> and just have a tantrum right. everywhere. And just I like just black out. We're here, That's but guess what? I'm, I'm not engaged. It. Like I would just make a scene <laughs> at every place. We're going to talk to every single person at the venue. I want to talk to the waiters. You explain to them why we're not engaged. The way I would walk in and be like, just want everybody to know I'm not engaged, but this woman made this appointment. Like I would just throw everyone under the bus. I would just be the biggest asshole. I'd go to the appointments, but you'd regret it. I feel this though. I feel this. God, it's you get to that five year mark and you're like, okay, when's it gonna happen? And now she's on year six, and like <laughs> people just six. nonstop ask. It's oh, six yeah. years is a long time. I met someone the other day that was dating for fourteen years before they got engaged and just recently got married. Did they start dating but when they were they like thirteen? Want to get engaged? no twenties. But did they, like they want? To? They they were just waiting. You know, marriage isn't for everybody. Yeah, no, they were holding out. Oh my god. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm not that strong. Yeah. So (laughs) I want to talk about, but kind of like set a light ultimatum, I guess. But when did you tell him that? I, well, I made a joke year one where I was like, okay, well, by year three, like we should have a decent idea of like if we want a long term future together. And then at year three, when we did, and I was like, okay, but if we're not engaged by year five, I will just say like, I'm not going to stick around. Like this is not an ultimatum. This is like, I want you to be sure you know. Yeah. Sure. But for me, like, mm-hmm. I do want certain things in my life. And if by year five, like, you're not ready for those things, then I have to move on because it takes time to find a new person, date, get serious, you know, whatever. So I like that you framed it as this isn't yes. an ultimatum. It's yeah. just a discussion about goals and what I'd like for my future. And I'm not telling you you have to do anything. I'm just telling no. you how I see my future being. Exactly. And it's like, it's not an ultimatum because it's like, you can't force someone to do something. Mm-hmm. You can set your boundaries. You can be very open. And this is where I go down the rabbit hole of like the difference between a boundary and an ultimatum. Mm-hmm. And it's tough, but like you have to have those conversations because totally. otherwise like you're denying yourself things you really want. And that are going to make you happy. Yeah. And that's still pretty lenient. Five years is a long yeah. time. You know, three years and then the five years. I love the way that you framed that also and, like, gave the language for it even for our listeners. How old are you guys? Uh, I just turned 30. He'll be 30 in August. Okay. Oh, oh younger, babies. Man. Yeah, um, I know. He likes to joke that I'm a cougar. I'm like, it's okay, six everybody months relax. difference. <laughs> what the hell? So everybody six just, let's, let's stop this conversation. <laughs> And then he was he like, yeah? Yeah, he was like, I respect that. Like, okay. I know I want to marry you. I think his biggest thing, and, like, I think this is maybe the patriarchy at play, is, like, he wanted to be in a position, like, of a more provider. Like, I want to totally. be able to, like, pay for the ring. I want to be able to pay for a wedding. I want to be able to, like, you know, go in on things with you. So his nervousness was that. Like, he was 100%. ready. But then it's like, okay, well, we can just get engaged. Like, you don't have to then 
do all these other things. Like, even now that I'm engaged, like, it's this weird sense of security where I'm like, wedding? Ah, we'll get to it when we get to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll elope this fall and then have the real one, Mm -hmm. like, down the line. But the engagement, like, it flipped a switch in my head, which is really weird. In terms of more security? Yeah. Great. You can relax a little. Yeah, it's like, well, what's the difference? Like, it's just like a little, like, paperweight on my hand now, but... It's just it's this a different weird... level of commitment. Yeah, it Absolutely. is. It's like it's of more it of that is. forward facing, like, I choose you. Mm-hmm. I want to be with you. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Future. We have a friend that felt like that. I remember her telling me, she's like, I just, not about the ring necessarily, but she was like, I just want to know for certain that yeah. like, I'm the one. We're in this. Like, and then I feel like she is completely chilled out about when the wedding will be, if ever. Yeah. I've seen that yeah. a lot. Lifelong fiance. With people. Yeah. I've seen that a lot with people, though. They just yeah. kind of like calm down. They relax a little bit Yeah. You more. can relax yeah. a little bit. I'd be even curious to talk to men who have proposed and if they could notice the difference of yeah. just like you get to relax, chill a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I feel agree. like, yeah. Like the energy shifts. Oh, the he, he said so, too. He's like, everything feels so zen, like so happy and fun right now. And I'm like, yeah. See, you could have had this a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't have waited so long. so fun. Well, of course I asked how old you guys are because like giving somebody a five-year runway at 25 is super normal and healthy and fine. At 40, if you're not sure if you want to marry me and I want to have kids, that's like you can't have a five-year runway no. necessarily. So that's no. why I asked how old you guys were because it's different at every age. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, well, if I was going to start dating yeah. again, it'd be like a year. And if I don't know at that point, then I'm out. Next. <laughs> Everything's just short. Next. Like, yeah. It's changed to one and three. I'm going to set a three and five. Okay. So we talked about. Sooner, yeah. We talked about. Exactly. <laughs> Another day closer to death. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of rings, we love this one so much. Okay. She says, my boyfriend and I have been together for over two years. We've recently started talking about engagement and marriage. Recently, we got into one of the biggest arguments we've ever had about picking out the engagement ring. My boyfriend is very passionate that an engagement should be a complete surprise, including the engagement ring. We argued back and forth for about an hour about this. I tried to get him to ask my friends just the general style I like and he says he doesn't want anyone but my parents to know he's going to propose he even said if you don't like the ring I pick we can just return it I even suggested buying just a gold band first and he said he wants to buy me a diamond I want to mention that this isn't a control thing with him he genuinely wants every aspect of the proposal to be a surprise and a really special moment just for the two of us so am I the asshole for wanting my boyfriend to have free reign on picking my ring or should I just let him pick and hope for the best sincerely just wants a solitaire cushion cut in yellow gold go off it's a nice style we should drop her name okay what do you think uh, my did you fiance, pick your ring? In a way, so correct answer. Yeah, in a way, <laughs> we went to different jewelry stores together. I tried on a bunch of options, and then they didn't have like the moissanite that I wanted in the store, so they had to like order it in, mm-hmm. and so I just got to hold like the loose stone over my hand. So I like then told them what I wanted. But I never saw the final ring. Yeah. The surprise is special. But it can't be – I mean, we're talking about like Aiden with the pear cut with Sex and the City. I mean, that's what's happening here. And then he talked to Samantha and he picked the right ring. Like, it's terrifying. A boy picking out something you're you're not going to wear forever. You're not going to like it. I don't want them to pick out pajamas I'm going to wear. No. And I'm going to throw that out after a season. No. Like, I – okay, I picked out my ring. There was this jewelry store that we used to walk by a lot. And one day I saw this ring I wanted in the window. And I walked him by the jewelry store and was like, that's the thing I want. Yeah, there's just a lot of different ways to go about it. Like, you're not going to get something you love if you don't pick it yourself. To him to completely block her on giving general direction. At least take a fucking minute and look at the Pinterest board. Like, yeah. At that point, you're just being willfully ignorant about what I want for the sake of your own selfish needs. Right. Love that. Yes. yes. This and is about me as well. Yes. I have to yes. wear it. Yeah, forever. I have to wear it forever. So, him being like, well, we can return it. Why not just get it right from the start so then I'm ultra happy. The pictures we take and share to announce are ones I love the ring in. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. Like, what is it about your ego that you can't allow for a little bit of input? And I like that she acknowledged, like, I genuinely think he just wants to surprise me. I think it comes from a good place. But at some point, like, his need to surprise her has superseded his desire to make her happy with this thing that she wants. Yeah. And it's not fair. No. Why does that supersede I have a what huge problem with the we can just return it. And that's not how this works. That is, like, your ego speaking. That this so crazy. We all know the moment is so special. There's photos. I'm not going to be happy. And the thing is, there is 
such a spectrum of this. It's not just I pick it out exactly or it's a complete surprise. Most people fall somewhere in the middle yeah. also, of a general direction has been provided. You've talked to her best friend or her mom or whoever it yeah. may be. This is just doesn't have to be one way or the other. No. I'm glad that you brought up Boys and I because, listen, at different ages, finances come into play a little bit more. But, like, when I was getting engaged, we didn't have that much money. And I wanted mm-hmm. to communicate to him. I don't care if this is, like, a CZ. I don't care if it's Boys and I. Like, I want to discuss it even to the point of, like, what I am comfortable with you spending. Because, like, yeah. if we're going to build our life together and neither of us has any money, I don't want you to put yourself in a financial position at the beginning of our relationship mm-hmm. that I don't need you to be in. Like, I don't need you to spend all this money on a diamond. We can replace the diamond someday. Like, and everybody has totally different feelings about this. Yeah. You should do exactly I mean, what you want. These lab-grown diamonds are bomb. They're gorgeous. You, I just don't there's... care that much about a perfect real diamond if no. we're young and we have no money. Real diamonds, you cannot guarantee if it's a ethically sourced diamond or not. Mm-hmm. You literally cannot guarantee it. The lab-grown diamonds are getting so good. So good. That there's a bunch of studies coming out now that like a lot of the diamonds that are being marketed as real, like secondhand, are actually lab-grown because the people can't tell. Wow. Well, and our friend who is a jewelry designer, she's incredible. And she does like very nice, expensive pieces for like high end clients. But, and she does, she'll do whatever you want. But she's just, the only difference is the resale value. It has nothing to do with how it looks and the clarity. Mm -hmm. It's just if you were planning on (laughs) reselling it. So here we go with the engagement thing. That's not the plan. So they don't hold their value as much. But like you said, I think we're getting to a space where you can't even tell the difference sometimes, like even professionals. No, and, like, if you go lab or moissanite, like, I was able to go so much bigger. And, like, if I told you how much this costs, you'd be like, what the fuck? But who is this for? Like, so nobody at lunch is well, – your girlfriends, because that's who you're trying to impress. They bring out their yeah. monocle. No one's going to whip out their monocle and be like, that's <laughs> the diamond not tester. real. Yeah. Like, who, who no. are we trying to impress here? It's, What's the difference? I look at, like, guys that don't listen to who they're proposing to for input. To me – you just want to lift your leg and piss on it. Mm-hmm. Like you want to mark your territory. I have a friend and she does like her ring now, but she literally like we sat down and recorded an episode for her podcast and she literally goes, I wanted your ring. Like that's literally what I told him I wanted. If you could draw up the complete opposite of this, that's what she got. Rectangle, halo around it, thick band, pave diamonds all around the band. And she goes, I love it now because you know, he put all this thought and energy sure. going to the jeweler and doing it. But when I got it, I was so like, it just wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. And it's like, that is a very special day. It's about both of you. He gets to plan it. That is a huge surprise. Yay. But let me have a little input on the ring because also you want to mark this day with the ring, right? Yeah. What does that mean if you're returning it? <laughs> right. <laughs> You don't have anything left to signify the day. It's so true. I do want like this memory of this moment. I want to look at the ring and be like, I remember this. Not I remember returning this. I had a friend and her now husband proposed on our college campus. Like we went to Clemson. It was like very he, the way he planned it was great. And he's like a thoughtful, good planner. But I don't know what happened with the sizing. And he did not get it right. No. She could not get it on her finger. No. So all really? the pictures were sitting like on this, she had to just do like the pictures with it sitting like right on the top of her. It couldn't go Dude, over her knuckle. I would have borrowed someone's hand and like shot. held their hand, like right. angled it weird. I don't know. I would have borrowed someone's hand. And then you oh, told no. it was it was brutal. Like it wasn't a like let's lube it up and get it on. No, it, it was, was it will not go over the knuckle. So she. <laughs> oh no! And, like I just felt so bad. So this stuff matters. Okay, next email. I told my husband he is not allowed to go to strip clubs anymore because I found <laughs> <laughs> because I found out he lied about going to one while I was out of the country with his family. What? So she's on vacation with his family. No, I know. I just He's... want more info. She's oh, about with his family and he's at the strip club. <laughs> he's like, why don't you take a vacation with my family? Because I want to see these titties. <laughs> <laughs> That's so insane. Oh, my God. He was like, if I can send her off with my family, I'm going full puss at the strip club. You know, my sister-in-law and I are, like, going to Amsterdam this summer. My brother's staying home, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I guess. I'm going to take her to a strip club. We're going to Amsterdam. 100%. titties. Okay. He and his friend went to a fully nude one in town. It was a fully nude strip club. Stayed out until 4 a.m., went home, and unplugged our security cameras so I couldn't see what was happening. 
if you unplug my security camera. Hey, he's cheating. I will be on the phone with you so quickly. There's no reason to unplug a security camera unless you're cheating. That's insane. What are you doing? Okay. I found out about it because his email was open on my computer. When confronted, he said they didn't. I guess didn't go to the strip club. It took him four months to finally fess up. His friend is for sure a piece of shit that cheats on his wife often. I already don't like him, obviously, and try to limit how often they hang out together. He gets pissed at me when I talk poorly about his friend, and we always end up arguing about this dude. Am I the asshole for not allowing him to go to the strip club or hang out with his friend more? What do I you mean, think? it sounds like you... I've, okay, you go first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you had it. I'm sitting over here. I'm kind of fuming right now. I'm just like, this is... Every part of this is bad. It sounds like you have information about this friend. You know he's a bad influence. And your husband <sighs> lied to you. That's the problem you have. Like, you not allowing him... You can set your boundary, yeah. but girl, he's going to keep lying to you. He's going to keep going. He's going to keep doing what he wants because he doesn't respect you. It's not like, about the strip club. It's not about the this strip club. This is like club. there's deeper issues here you that have, either yeah. need to be seen with a therapist or figured out or relationship yeah. ended. It's it's uh-huh. so much deeper than the strip club because I feel like she's in her head like, how am I this? Well, I don't know how she feels. A lot of women don't. We've talked about this on a whole episode. The fact that she even wrote in feels like she doesn't want to be a woman that bans her man from going to the strip club. Yeah. I don't think strip clubs are inherently a problem. Like – if my fiance was going to be like, hey, I'm going to go to the strip club this weekend with yeah. the guys, I'd be like, cool, have fun. You know, I'm kind of jealous. I want to go, but like, have fun. It's the fact that like it's been a boundary and he lied about it and it took him four months to fess up. So he lied to your face repeatedly on multiple different occasions for four months and then tells you. Yeah. And the fact that he unplugged the cameras, he's taking actions to deceive you. I mean, a lot of these, I would say, ask your partner how they would feel in your shoes. You are going to this the strip club with your friend who cheats on his wife all the time. Mm-hmm. If the roles were reversed, how would you feel if I was going to, I know it's a little bit different, but to a male strip clubber with a bunch of dudes with their dicks out with my friend who cheats on her husband all the time i mean yeah how would you feel no i mean he probably wouldn't care if he's cheating but i'm not also saying that he's cheating i just like there's so many things going on yeah. here that suck yeah for her i feel bad that she's even in the position to be like i don't trust your judgment when you're out with this person i don't think that like one person can make another person do anything and i can't really recall a time in my life where i've said like do not hang out with this friend i will judge you if you spend time with this person i don't really understand it but i feel bad she's already in this position where she's like my husband's not even in a adult enough to like make his own decisions and then he took the extra step of unplugging the cameras mm. i the strip club thing doesn't bother me isolated yeah because like you said with justin you'd be like all right have fun i trust you yeah. like it doesn't matter it's it's that he took this extra step to make sure she couldn't see it also why is he unplugging the cameras i'm confused he he got home and unplugged them why did, that's the why math did he unplug them that's what i'm trying to figure right. out the only reason you unplug a camera is because you're about to do something in that house that area that you don't want your wife seen. So he went out at 4 a.m. just because he didn't want her to know what time he got home. But then when did he unplug the camera? I don't know. After he got home. So she said, stayed out until 4, went home and unplugged the security cameras. Yeah, unplugged it. So I couldn't see what was happening. So maybe so she wouldn't see that he got home at 4. You guys, my head goes down the darkest place. I'm like, he walked in, unplugged the camera, and then went back outside to grab who was waiting. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do like, come yeah. on. Like, no, who, who's to say? I mean, here's the thing. It's just like she is – going to be constantly playing whack-a-mole with with issues. So she's like, okay, he lied about this strip club, so he can't go to the strip club anymore. But something else is going to pop up, and then you're like, "That now you can't hang out with this friend. Now you can't do this thing. Like, he's going to do what he wants to do. Like, it actually has nothing to do with, like, seeing a bunch of strangers' pussies. Like, the strip club is not the issue here. So for her to just keep, she's, like, chasing a moving target. Yeah. That's just going to keep changing. It's genuinely the fact that you can't trust him, which a relationship without trust you're doomed. Yeah. And he doesn't respect you enough to communicate to you, to tell you the truth. He's willing to lie to you for months <laughs> until you nag him enough or catch him enough mm-hmm. to where he's, oh, I'm caught. I can finally fess up. Like, you have a big problem here. It's really not about the strip club. Because, nope. like, I know so many people are heated on that. They're like, you know, my partner can't go to a strip club. It's disrespectful to me and our relationship. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, there's so many arguments there. But, like, it's really actually not about that. 
Like, you have bigger issues. Yeah. And she says, like, he gets pissed at me when I talk poorly about the friend. But I go out of town for one night and you go to a strip club with this person. You spend time with him. You come before in the morning. You unplug our cameras. Everything that I thought about this person was true. There is evidence here now. The last thing I'm concerned with is the strip club. He gets pissed when I talk poorly about the friend who's cheating on his wife. <laughs> I don't think that gives free reign to talk mm-hmm. your shit. I think so. Are we not in a marriage that's committed? Like, shouldn't you be talking shit on him too? Yeah, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck. It's probably a motherfucking duck. Yeah. Shouldn't you want to surround yourself with more high caliber people? Okay, so fine. Sometimes people no, are grandfathered not. in. <laughs> Sounds like no. <laughs> sometimes grandfathered. Sometimes they're grandfathered. But I'm not going to a strip club with that person. Like, right. uh, fine, yeah. you want to go to dinner with him and come up at a normal hour. I guess I could deal with this. This is your lifelong friend. But you have taken this person who's already a low caliber person. You've gone to a strip club with him. Well, yeah. that's the friend you're going with. Yeah, guilty by association, I'm going to say. Like, you are who you, like, hang out with. Like, it yeah. shows your true colors maybe a little bit because you're so close with this person. There's a lot to unpack there. I know. I really feel for her in this relationship. There are tons of red flags. And if you guys are curious about more strip club discussion, I think our episode is called What Counts as Cheating? Mm-hmm. Does that sound right? It yeah. kind of just came back to me. And it was probably it was a f- couple years ago. It was our first YouTube episode, I think. Was it? Maybe. It was probably in 2022. We were in the, the New York City studio and we did a poll and we had so many people share their thoughts on like. It's a really hot topic. It's a totally Absolutely. hot yes. topic. It's yeah. very. Just should I allow my partner to go to a strip club? So highly debatable. And is, yeah. it a bachelor, is it a bachelor party or is this down the street from our house? Why are we doing this? Yeah. Is it a weeknight with a buddy for no reason? What's the point of this? Wednesday. What are you getting to? <laughs> like, <laughs> what day of the week matters for Raina? <laughs> She's like, does. No strip clothes on Tuesday. Tuesday. Are you going there for the wings special or the tits? Right. Like, yeah. this, like, this is this a valid question. Is this an event with a bunch of guys or is this where you've chosen to have dinner? Yeah. It's like weird yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, and it's also what are you doing? doing when you're there are you sitting around the main stage watching <laughs> like a general dance yeah or are you then in a booth getting private dances where they're like actually yeah, right. on you right totally there's, there's that levels. changes things for me scumbag cheater on his wife he's getting lap dances a hundred percent yeah this is what he's chosen he's like come on man your wife's out of town i also not gonna know yeah. i want to know where people live we need to start saying where you live because i'm like are they in atlanta strip club capital of the world are they in cleveland you know why like, what's the difference it's like just like why because types i gotta get a visual yeah like, more people go to strip clubs in atlanta like that's what you do it's, it's like just a, i just want a visual apple tower. i want to know the type of strippers yeah and i want to get canada? a visual of the vibe that's all it is okay. is this in canada and they're doing the toonie toss right have what? you heard about that no what is this so in canada they right, have like, like toonies like they're coins essentially and so some of the strip clubs there like they have like a cone that the dancer will like hold in front of their vagina and you shoot the (laughs) coins into the cone what can we do that at our shows toonie toss like where's the we're gonna wear it around get a strap on strap on belt for your cone i think it sounds fun right now we should incorporate it you want to do it you and me or ryan walk around (laughs) (laughs) like a tip jar at church (laughs) it's the collection plate is ryan wearing there you go i make him use the money to take me on a date (laughs) i don't know i kind of like the thought of us on stage and people are throwing (laughs) coins at us we just get pelted we have like a few haters and they just hit us in the face oh my god well like a silver dollar people are throwing shit at shows bb rex just got hit in the face with a phone that made me so mad Oh my God, I was, really? It was so sad. I felt so bad. People for her. throwing stuff. It's just so gross. Cardi, someone threw a, like a water she bottle, threw a microphone at somebody. That's what it was. Yeah. She, well, threw she threw it back. back. Yeah. yeah. It's so gross. Don't, don't start no shit. Don't throw heavy shit. Okay. Should we <laughs> end on this one? This is a personal fave. Here, if I read it. Okay. Of read it. <laughs> okay. This is my th- I, last night I was like reading this laughing. It was texting Rain and she was already asleep. But I was like, did you read this one? It was my favorite. She tried to be in the car. I'd like died. Okay. okay. Hey, ladies. My husband asked what I wanted from the grocery store and I told him a watermelon. He proceeded to tell me to eat the grapes in the fridge and he didn't want to waste money on more fruit that would just go bad when we already had fruit. I hate that energy. Like your parents, like we have ice cream at home. It's, it's like, oh, we don't have ice cream at home. Just give yeah. me a different fruit. <laughs> And so he then came home without the watermelon, but with a four pack of cupcakes. Later that night, I was staring at the price tag nine eighty nine on the cupcake package, and filled with rage, I punched each individual cupcake through the pack. Girl, just, what? Just enough to ruin the aesthetic, but not the integrity of the cupcake. Mm. I did feel bad later and told him I punched them out of rage. And then, oh and then he felt bad later and went back to the store to get the watermelon while I was taking a shower. 
<laughs> Love you guys. You got me through my doctoral program. Oh, she's a doctor like hey. you. And my long distance relationship, aka the worst time of my life. Oh, okay. Uh, you helped me get to the other side and come into my own. Best, Dr. Katie. We're not going to read her full name, but <laughs> the she, cupcake puncher. Also, she she's like salted the pastry. Yeah. She's in med school. She's pissed and she's like, yeah, salted the cupcakes. Honestly, I get it though. Like, how easy is it to just, just get, the get me a watermelon? Also, we're in a debate about something that's three dollars. Are you serious? Well, listen, is she a food waster? Because he went back and got it. He corrected his mistake, but I'm wondering if there's a deeper issue there where he's like, she never finishes the. Food. Who know. cares? Get the watermelon. If you're worried about it going to waste, get the pre-cut stuff. That's even like mm-hmm. it's yeah. a little more expensive. But then you one don't have to do the work to cut it, less, and two yeah. less to eat. Hopefully, it won't get wasted. But get the watermelon. Yeah. Get someone what they want from the grocery store we learned this in the breakup like baby wanted 12 lemons like just oh. get what your partner asks unless it's something extreme i'm sure you can afford the watermelon you can afford your 10 dollar cupcakes yeah. like just get what your partner wants you to, you know what i mean like no. don't put your shit on them of like we have grapes in the fridge like just get the this is so weird it's like i asked you to do a thing for, uh, would she say no to him no if he said like hey babe can you pick me up some cupcakes would she be like fuck you <laughs> You don't need Absolutely it. Absolutely not. No, she'd get the cupcakes. Like, fuck this, your cupcakes. Fuck your cup. Like he's at the store, and like you said, he could get the pre-cut small amount of watermelon. There's We're so not in a ways. watermelon drought in this country. Right. It's not an endangered species. No. Species is a hard word to say. I was a little speech impediment. It's that's <laughs> it's, also, it's also the wrong word, but yeah. <laughs> Enda- not the watermelon. It's the endangered species. <gasps> There's no scarcity of watermelon. No. There you go. It's weird. It's it's like okay, is this a control thing? Like just get me my watermelon and then you have to go back now anyways yeah like the weaponized incompetence surrounding grocery shopping for people <laughs> baffles me uh, yeah. ashley and i don't even like it when we order on instacart and it is a man that picks our stuff oh, a up. man I hate. shopping for me i can't talk about this enough they always get the wrong things what? they never pick good substitutions they like i should be able to select my instacart like yeah. i select my task rabbit like because yeah. it's just a woman all the time i'll pay more i'll pay premium for a woman that's just that should be they a, should a woman, three more dollars a woman tax they honestly yeah. should I want to pay them more anyway. Yeah. That this, it I really pay. Is so I would nuts. pay additionally to always too. guarantee I get a gal. This girl got me a, a similar nail polish color. She's like, I thought this would look nice. Similar color. I was like, right on. Thank also, you. I, and I posted recently on Instagram stories that a man got my full Sephora haul. Five things. He was five for five. But then, wow. and I did a whole story on it. I was so proud of him. And I like even screenshot a photo of him. And I like said it to the hero by Mariah Carey on my Instagram story, whatever. I was like, he really did that. And then someone DM me and was like, the Sephora employee shop. And they just handed off to the Instagram. <laughs> no. I was like, what was his name? Burke. I was like, Burke did that. I like unboxed it. I was like, oh my god, we're like five for five. Every single thing, every shade like, is, is correct. Is this is too good to be true. And someone, yeah, ruined it for me. I was like, yeah, we just do that at Sephora. I'm uh, I also, okay. I also feel like, listen, <laughs> relationships are hard, and there's a million things to fight about. This cannot be the thing no. that we are arguing about, right? No. I'm asking for fruit, and it's not like there's five different types of champagne, and I've asked for the most expensive one, and you're like. We don't have the money for that right now. Just get me the fucking right. fruit. Well, yeah. So is she the asshole for punching the cupcakes? I love I mean, the cupcake punch. It's a little unhinged. A little unhinged. But I like the punishment fits the crime. It clearly sent the right message and you got your watermelon after. So, I mean, you're not that wrong because it worked. I kind of, not knowing anything else about this couple, I just feel like I like them. I just feel that she... <laughs> is funny you know she punched the cupcakes then she apologized then he went and got the watermelon like i just feel like they're laughing about this yeah and telling this at yeah. dinner parties no this is a good one yeah this is so much better i want to know like club. what happened to her that day though like what state of mind is she in when she, she goes had her board she, she just did her, her doctor the test like <laughs> what, what like... is happening this day is she drunk are all the lights off in the kitchen it's like late at night she's gone down for a snack and she's just like fuck the did she punch the top of it all four of them got fucked up at once she's like if i don't get what i want you don't get what you want Right. And also, like, I like that she, like, gently punched them. She's like, you can still eat them. They just don't, yeah. they don't look good. Well, she said she, she preserved the it. integrity. She has a respect for I pastries, know. that's for sure. <laughs> she was like, I didn't have the heart to ruin them. To ruin them. I want to, like, be a fly on the wall watching this person, like, think through, like, am I going to punch this mm-hmm. cupcake? I know. Just the wavering, the, the back and forth, the, like, the tremble. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna do it. Is it coming? Right, you're having this like out of body experience. Like, am I about to do this? Have don't... you ever done something like that though, where it's like you break something of someone's or like you retaliate and then instantly regret it? Because it sounds like she regretted it. Yeah. Because she told him, like, I I was me. So I'm sorry. Actually, I have a callback. I had one of those yeah. moments where my Austin was at a strip club and I pulled up and I was like so mad. I ran in there and I was screaming at him in the strip club. Yep. And I was having like an out of body experience of like, I can't believe I'm doing this. You're, she's really doing it. She's really here. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Did you like drag him out of there? I don't think that that was really on the table. We just fought a lot. I was 22. You know, mm. you do a lot of stuff when you're 22. Yeah. Well, this was so fun. This was so good. Yeah. This totally flew fun. by. This was such a blast. I know. I just want to keep going. You have really good write-ins. You we, have really good ones. We loved doing your show. We really couldn't speak highly you. enough yeah. about it. But we, yeah, we love our listeners and they always deliver and there were so many more. So maybe we'll get to them over time. Like, you should. And to tackle them more. Especially like the family stuff is oh, really God. just, it's trickier. Yeah. In-laws are really tough. It's a tough relationship to navigate mm-hmm. with anyone, especially and then like you have your mother-in-law that tries to breastfeed your baby and you know there's always crazy stories that happen with in-laws yeah. so it is yeah, so highly you don't get to pick them no like, your fucking family oh, that's insane isn't that wild You're like this is my family i didn't choose this i know so anyway well morgan tell everybody where they can listen to you find you all the things i have a podcast called two hot takes you can find it wherever you listen to podcasts youtube tiktok wherever we read crazy reddit stories it's a good time that's it. Great. Thank Your you studio so is beautiful, so we do yeah. recommend watching. Thank you have a great you. YouTube presence, you. but we went in there and we were so impressed with everything you have set up. I know. So. Your episode is amazing. It comes out this week, I think, actually. So oh, yay. Okay, it's great. It's going to be good. Be sure to listen to that. You guys crushed it. Your takes were so good. Thank you. Especially about you know the wedding and the chaps. and. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge us, you guys. And also, <laughs> find Morgan on ZocDoc for all your... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I love ZocDoc, though. Oh, my God. You guys are your doctor. Okay. And you know where to find us, girlsgottoeat.com. We are Girls Gotta Eat Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hess. Raina is Raina.Greenberg. And our other company, Vibes Only, is VibesOnly.com. Vibes Only on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube. Share this episode with a friend. And we'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.